So towards the end of last year, I gave my opinion on Intel. It wasn't a very nice opinion, but it was still the truth, at least my truth. So Intel decided to reach out to me and with the help of ASUS, sent me the Zephyrus M16 with the Intel Tiger Lake H45 processor paired with the RTX 3070. If you haven't seen the unboxing of my video, go check that out. But in today's video, I want to have another formal conversation with Intel. This is your moment. Your back is against the wall. All I can really say is come back and prove to me and everyone else that you are the greatest chip maker. So let's talk about the star in the room, which is the new i9-H45 Tiger Lake chip. And for those curious, this is the i9-11900H, 8 cores and 16 threads. This is basically a no compromise machine for not only professional use, but for gamers as well. And we've come a long way in terms of the laptop industry. There was only so much power you could squeeze into a laptop due to its form factor. And it feels like we're entering this new era of laptops where we can actually have desktop performance on the go in a device that is gradually becoming thinner and lighter. Now, compared to last generation, this 11th gen chip by Intel is much improved. And I can't tell if this is Intel giving me the best that they've got or that this is them just warming up for the decade. But I have faith that they're just warming up for us. So let's talk about the practicality of this laptop with Tiger Lake. And here's something I've learned after reading some comments on my videos in the past year and talking to my friends as well. There's one thing desktops can never beat a laptop in and it's portability. And the interesting thing about portability is that you can't put a price on it. Since the pandemic, portability and being mobile is essential, and in some people's workflow like mine, you need to have some capable hardware to go with that. So features like Thunderbolt 4 and having the ability to dock and use a computer as a desktop with higher throughput is a great addition. Depending on your router, Tiger Lake supports Wi-Fi 6, so you get fast speeds over the air. Now you might be asking yourself, well, budget laptops come with Wi-Fi 6, but you have to understand with this new architecture that Intel has presented, we now have the ability for a Wi-Fi 6E. Now, it's not common yet, and it's pretty much for the upper echelon of society. Oh, wow, echelon, Wi-Fi 6E, Wi-Fi 6 echelon. I see, what it, I see what I did. We also have PCI Express Gen 4 on the go, which can greatly impact specific use cases for individuals. I do also wanna mention Intel's XE graphics, Yes, this does have the 3070, but Intel's integrated graphics and just ventures outside of their CPU department is impressive in itself, and I just wanted to touch on that. So it's nice for battery life by turning off the 3070 and just using Intel's XE graphics. But in terms of professional use, it was really hard for me to push the CPU to its limit because there's just so much headroom on this Tiger Lake chip. My workflow right now is running React Native code and a couple Docker containers, which isn't the most demanding task. So I decided to run a proper compile test and the results were pretty good. So if anyone from my company is watching, an ROG Zephyrus would be great for the developer team. Just saying. Now, I haven't returned home yet, but one of my biggest annoyances is that if I want to stream or play games at home, I have to disconnect my desktop, my monitor, and take everything with me. And I have to hope that everything works when I hook it back up just to do those activities. But with the Tiger Lake H45 paired with the RTX 3070, this is all I have to take with me and, you know, the cable, of course. And this is what laptops are supposed to be. Similar desktop performance on the go, and the performance you get is so good that this could probably replace your desktop altogether. Now, do keep in mind that this is a 2560 by 1600 display, and I'll highlight the laptop in a bit, but the display is a bit higher than 1440p, so you really do need that extra power to get a great gaming experience. I had an enjoyable time playing Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As always, gotta salute Square Enix when possible. Same experience when moving over to Devil May Cry 5. Yes, I still play this game. Devil May Cry 5 does not get old. The same can also be said for Borderlands 3 after beating the game five times now and losing my save file every single time. The game is just that good. 
and I'm absolutely horrible at Apex Legends, but I can say that I had a good time landing and then two minutes later ending up at the main menu. And all this performance is all on the go. So let's highlight some of the features and specs on this laptop. So this is one of the best displays on a laptop that I've ever used. It's a QHD panel that goes up to 165 Hertz. The color accuracy, the near bezel display, and just the finish on the panel itself makes it really enjoyable to look at. The aspect ratio is 16 by 10, so the screen looks a lot bigger than what you might think, especially with a laptop size of 15 inches. The trackpad is also massive, and I haven't ran into any issues so far. It has a nice click to it, but once again, I'm a trackpad tapper. The keyboard has RGB, but I leave it on white because I'm trying to do work and not pretend that I'm at the club. The computer has plenty of ports, so let's start off with the left-hand side. We have a headphone jack, full-size ethernet jack, USB-A, and two USB-C ports, with one of them having the capability of Thunderbolt 4. Moving on to the other side, we have another USB-A and a micro SD card slot. In terms of upgradability, the Wi-Fi card and RAM can be upgraded, but do keep in mind on what model you get, you either get eight or 16 gigabytes soldered onto the motherboard. In terms of the storage that you can upgrade, I highly recommend that you pick up a PCI Gen 4 NVMe drive, that way you take full capabilities of the slot, and there's two of them in this laptop. So overall, the hardware and the overall build, I would say that Asus, you did a pretty good job with the M16, with this being the successor to the M15. But now we have to circle back to Intel and have our formal conversation that I alluded to at the beginning of this video. Going into 2021, I was genuinely worried for Intel. I was worried the upper departments didn't care about what was being said by them to the public, which is probably a good thing, but I thought that they would remain stagnant for years to come and just be in their own bubble. And I felt like towards the end of 2020, the world was giving Intel one last chance. And here we are towards the end of 2021 with Tiger Lake. And I would say that this is the beginning of a new Intel. And I truly believe that. I will admit though that the cost is a bit steep, but we can work on that later. Let's just focus on performance and features and deal with prices later. You're gonna have to bring it down a echelon if you know what I'm talking about. But in all seriousness, I'm happy because it feels like Intel is finally listening to their customers. They're taking feedback and actually trying to change to make themselves better and more competitive. And can you really hate a company for doing that? I would say the answer to that question is no. If they keep this up, I'm excited to see what they offer in the next two years or even the decade to come. Because in terms of the chip industry right now, this is going to be a decade to remember for sure. Now, I wanna end this video off with this. The i9-11900H Tiger Lake chip is amazing, don't get me wrong, but how does this affect the everyday user who buys an i3, an i5, or even an i7? And I just want you guys to keep in mind about the trickle-down effect. If Intel can continue to push the envelope by making these high-end CPUs, their architecture and all those benefits should, in theory, trickle down to more mass-produced, consumer-grade products that we use every day. And I can't wait to see the performance that Intel will have with smaller nanometer architectures. But I just want to say, Intel, directly to you, thanks for proving that you still have what it takes to be a leading chip manufacturer, even though supply chains are pretty constrained in every industry. So with all that being said, guys, I appreciate every sub, like, and comment. Thanks once again, Intel and Asus, for sending me over this laptop. And as always, guys, much love. This is the dawn of a new Intel and my hand hurts doing that, but hey, it's a pretty nice laptop. Can't deny that.